by the University of Michigan in such a wonderfully inspiring way. I am humbled to be in the company of such an amazing person as Raul Wallenberg. It is the history of this work, of the human rights work, that allowed me to believe in real change beginning at the grassroots. Our struggles will, will only benefit the next generation if each generation continues to demand better for future generations. Our work will never truly be done, only celebrated in the lives we live and the lives we leave behind to carry on the message that we are all one person, and this one person's name is humanity. Thank you to the University of Michigan community, my family and friends and supporters in Appalachia, and of course, Ron Wallenberg for inspiring future generations of human rights activists. The destruction of the mountains and the people, the destruction of the mountains and the removal of the people from the Appalachia, from Appalachia for coal. <laughs> uh, what is mountaintop removal? That's the big question most people have in their mind. They have no idea what mountaintop removal is. As you can see, mountaintop removal is the total destruction of a mountain and all that surrounds it for the seams of coal that lay within the layers of rock. To date, there's been more than 500 mountains destroyed and over 2,000 miles of streams buried or otherwise impacted. The people are often the last to leave. Uh, the community that you see in the foreground is, the name of that community is Lindy Town. Uh, the New York Times covered the disappearance of Lindy Town. Uh, Lindy Town no longer exists. In 2009, the coal company bought up the houses and depopulated the town. The layers of rock are blasted into rubble. The coal is extracted and everything that remains is dumped into adjacent valleys, making up what the industry calls valley fields. This was once a headwater stream of the Coal River Valley. And if you notice, that is, uh, the equipment on this site has 11 feet tires. I can stand inside of the tires. That will give you a sense of, of scale. Uh, the Coal River Valley is the valley that I live in. Uh, it, it's the headwaters of the Ohio River, which is the headwaters of the Mississippi. Uh, mountaintop removal is impacting the drinking water of citizens throughout the southeastern United States. We're all downstream. We all have the responsibility and obligation to protect these water resources. This is the commons. This belongs to the people. Why would government create laws to allow these places and people who de depend on them to be erased forever? This is Pigeon Roost Hollow. This is a stream nearby where we live at. This is the headwaters of the water throughout the eastern United States. This is what used to be a natural spring that runs along the bottom of the mountain. This water is now toxic. It's too toxic to breathe, let alone drink. What is left to sustain water, or sustain life, if we have no healthy water? We will die. Coal sludge is a waste product produced by washing coal with water and chemicals prior to shipping the coal to the market. Every preparation plant where they wash and prepare coal produces many thousand gallons of coal sludge each day, requiring massive disposal areas. Most sludge disposed of above ground in toxic lakes is called impoundments. Not only do these facilities often leach and cause black water spills uh, into our streams, there have been several catastrophic failures resulting in toxic floods, massive property destruction, and even death. And to, there's a newspaper clipping uh, on this slide, and that newspaper clipping is a clipping from where my aunt and my, my cousin uh, died in one of these black water, uh, one of these pond failures that happened in Bull Creek. 
This is a black water spill. This is uh, in the stream that runs by my home. This is, again, the headwaters of the eastern United States. People drink this water. EPA guidelines for conductivity for water are 3 to 500 microseconds. Streams around mountaintop removal test high. Here, more than 1,800. My stream that runs through our property tested 1,200. And that, that measures the heavy metal content in the water, so you know. Coal sludge pollutes our streams and wells and threatens our safety and well-being in our homes. As you can see, the coal sludge here is going straight into the streams. There's, no, uh, it, there's nothing to stop it. The coal companies are allowed to use our streams as their, their pollution uh, spillways. The coal industry has hundreds of sludge dams dotted throughout our mountains. In February 1972, a sludge dam on Buffalo Creek in Logan County <coughs> gave way, unleashing a torrent of thick, murky water that claimed 118 lives, left seven people missing, and destroyed the hundreds of homes, <coughs> leaving thousands of people homeless, including entire families that were members of my family. This is my home uh, before and after the flood of 2003. Failed sediment controls dams caused this flooding, much like what happened with Buffalo Creek. I've since been flooded nine times. A slurry injection is something that the coal companies are doing in our areas. And it's when they run out of room in their impoundments, to store their sludge, they pump it into underground aquifers, or I'm sorry, underground abandoned mines, and it ends up in our aquifers. In Boone County alone, we have 16 to 20 injection sites pumping millions of gallons per minute into our aquifers, and this is coal sludge going into our drinking water. This makes people sick. This is the water uh, in the tanks, uh, the toilet tanks of the people nearby where we live. This is what heavy metal does to the water resources in southern Appalachia. And in some cases, this is people's only drinking water. This is all they have. Heavy metal stains in the bathtubs is real common throughout uh, southern Appalachia. Th this is what coal does to water. The coal waste and water settles in the water heaters the water, may come, the water may come from the faucet clear, so you naturally drink it. These same solids, though, end up in the human body, causing fatal health problems. This is what my water does to, my, to the insides of my faucets. faucets. I have replaced these about every six months, or they completely close off. I purchase all of the water we consume by the gallon. Well water and entire aquifers are polluted by coal waste, and this makes people sick. Can cancer is as common as a coal in Appalachia. Chemicals found in coal sludge. Now, I won't try to pronounce this. Uh, that, that's beyond my uh, skills. Uh, but yeah, when we ask the coal industry, what's in this stuff? What's in coal sludge? They look at, they have the answer of, uh, it's a trade secret. What's in coal sludge is a trade secret. But yet they're pumping their trade secret into our drinking water and it's killing us. In 2007, Jupiter Coal Company used World War II uh, munition igniters on the mine site behind me. And it, they were in storage because they was too toxic for war. Uh, so they quit using them in war and decided that the Department of Defense and the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection and Jupiter Coal Company decided to dispose of these uh, munitions above my home, 3,500 feet from my home. As you can see, the arrow clearly points to where my home sets up. Uh, the photo in the top right, that's my barn. Uh, the, if you look 
in the horizon behind my barn, that's how close the blasting is to my home. This photo was actually an accident. Um, but yeah, it, it, that's how close they are to my home. And the photo on the bottom, that, that's how the dust, I mean, it, it falls on our homes uh, just as if it were fire moving through the valley. I mean, and, and at times you cannot see from one side of the valley to the other, the dust is so thick. And this mine site behind me is 1183 acres. Uh, the air pollution from mountaintop removal coal mining is heavily polluted with particulates that are known to cause cancer. There's silica and coal dust and chemicals used in these explosives, and they're being found in our homes and our bodies. An ever-growing number of peer-reviewed health research reports prove that mountaintop removal, the associated water pollution and air pollution, is killing people that live near these mine sites. You can find these health studies at ohvec.org and just to highlight a few of them, chronic cardiovascular disease, mortality, and mountaintop removal and mountaintop mining areas of central Appalachian states, uh, higher coronary heart disease and heart attack morbidity in Appalachian coal mining regions, lung cancer mortality is elevated in coal mining areas of Appalachia. There's now 23 of these health studies, peer reviewed health studies that's been released. Insults are the only way coal industry lawyers have to respond to the health research. Lawyers from Firm, Kroll, and Mori are, from the firm, Kroll and Mori are attacking the latest studies by Melissa Ahern and West Virginia's University Michael Hendricks, indicating that people who live near mountaintop removal operations face a greater risk of birth defects. But the internet posting from, our, from four of, our, of the firm's lawyers was, well, here's what it said. The study failed to account for consequential, <coughs> one of the most prominent sources of birth defects. That's what the attorney said. Well, I had to look this one up. And consequentity means that a blood relation refers to property, refers to the property of being of the same kinship. In other words, the industry attorneys, the only way that they have responded is by saying that our health problems was being caused by inbreeding. This was taken from my home in Bob White. This is a plume of dust that, ri dust that rises from the blasting and settles in our homes and in our, in our bodies. Uh, the, this, uh, they prepared for this blast for four days. And, and when they set it off, I was prepared to capture it. Um, and it's also available online. And I cut this out of a, out of a video. <coughs> Excuse me. West Virginia air pollution at mountaintop removal mines may cause heart problems. Adult male rats were exposed to the air particles. And 24 hours following the exposure, their blood vessels' ability to dilate and function normally was significant, significantly reduced. And that's an article that was in the State Journal, and that's a very cold, friendly uh, newspaper in the state of West Virginia. <clears throat> and even our dead do not rest in peace. This is Twilight Surface Mines. This is 25 square miles of nothing but blown up rock and poison water. And you'll notice uh, in the foreground, uh, well, there's three arrows you can see. It points to the cemeteries that is tangled up in this massive destruction. Uh, these are World War II, World War I, all of World Wars. Uh, there's, soldiers are buried in these cemeteries that fought for my rights to go to these, those cemeteries and visit them. And the coal companies won't let us. If we go, we have to wear boots and a hard hat. We are supervised. Um, we're limited on how long we can be there. And we have to take safety training. Mine Safety and Health Administration says that we have to take safety training to go to our cemeteries. The tactics of the coal industry is much like it was 150 years ago. This is a scanned page of our children's history book. It says in reference to surface mining, in some instances that the land is left 
and better than the four conditions. One local twelve-year-old, uh, one local twelve-year-old child was asked to do a report on surface minor reclamation, and he was failed because he couldn't come up with anything positive to say about it. His ancestral cemetery it is one of the ones that I just showed you, and it's inaccessible. He can't get to it, and uh, he, he, he's not going to say anything positive about it. Uh, the cold curriculum called Unfit for Fourth Graders. This was in the New York Times. You can Google this and find it. Uh, the activity included getting chocolate chip cookies out of chocolate or chocolate chips out of chocolate chip cookies with minimal damage. That was one of the activities. Uh, the, the, the title of this is called United States of Energy, and it was a scholastic curriculum that they was going to teach fourth graders. And it, it's, uh, there was three groups, Rethinking Schools, the Campaign for Commercial Free Childhood, and Friends of Earth worked to have this taken out of scholastic curriculum using our grassroots work as an example of why it should be taken out. Uh, Patriot Coal currently is attempting to file bankruptcy on 22,000 coal miners' health and retirement benefits. This will impact thousands of our local people. Generations of West Virginia coal miners have dedicated their careers to making Patriot and the entire coal industry a, a success. These employees and retirees have spent decades working hard under promise of fair wages, safe working conditions, and secure pension and lifetime health care benefits. I am therefore troubled that Patriot has indicated that this reviewing that it is reviewing pension and health care benefits as a potential source of savings as it restructures, especially all of these benefits were contractually agreed to uh, or voluntarily assumed by Patriot. That was words from Senator Jay Rockefeller to the pa Patriot CEO. Uh, and what's going on there is um, it, it, there's literally there's men in my community that that are being denied health care. Uh, because this company is, uh, they, they want to skip out on the health and retirement funds. And some of these men has worked as, has worked as long as 40 years in the coal mines, and they're going to walk away. Appalachia and her people are not a lost cause, and we will not leave our ancestral homes. We were here long before coal was discovered, and we are fighting to end mountaintop removal now. The community, the, the, the quotes here are from community members that were the last holdouts in communities. And this is Quinny Richmond from the town of Landytown that was destroyed. She says, we got to fight every day for everything. But at the end of the day, it's worth it all. We're still home. Why should we be sacrificed for the wealth of Wall Street? Why should we have to pay with all evidence? that we ever existed. It is, a, is it because we're hillbillies? Or is it because the coal industry thinks we're stupid hillbillies? That was Larry Gibson. We lost Larry Gibson on September the 9th of cardiac failure. We've grown from small town hall meetings with only a few attendees into a national movement. We demand an end to the abuses of people of Appalachia and our human rights. We deserve a life with health, with healthy land, clean water, clean air, security in our homes, and clean, sustainable energy. A clean, sustainable energy future for our children. We have had major actions with thousands of supporting members and member organizations, hundreds of arrests for nonviolent civil disobedience. We are the organization I work for and now owns property with 20 feet of coal underneath it in the town of Twilight to stop the depopulation of this town. If you'll notice, the mountaintop removal is moving towards where the, the Yalda Pen is, and uh, out, that's where our property sets. And the OBEC, 
the organization I work for uh, now owns property that's stopping the expanding mountaintop removal. And this was the idea of an underground union coal miner who was a former organizer, organizer in our community. And this is his property. We organized locally and nationally to win a new school for the kids in Sundial, West Virginia. In 2013-2014 school year, the children will be attending a new school upstream from the sludge dam prep plant mountaintop removal operation. If you'll notice where the arrow points, there is a schoolyard there. The school's been there for 40 years, longer than 40 years now. And the coal company built uh, the, the preparation plant, which you can see at the lower corner, and then they uh, put the 2.8 billion gallons of coal sludge behind an elementary school, and then they started blasting behind all of that. Uh, it, this is an elementary school full of children. There's been three, uh, three teachers that has taught at that school that has died of cancer. Uh, the, the kids, when they would go to school, would be sick. When they come home, they get better. Uh, and, and the kids brought our attention to this. The children came to us and said, hey, wait, that, that coal mine's making us sick. And it, that's listening is a very important aspect of my work. We filed lawsuits to force the companies to clean up their selenium pollution in our streams, and we won. Because of victories, because of our victories, we've been under violent attack by the industry supporters, including our own politicians. Senator Joe Manchin. This is our West Virginia State Senator. And his quote in his latest campaign uh, commercial is, I will take on anyone who tries to stop us. And I wonder, does he know that it's West Virginia citizens standing in his way? And yes, this firearm and his uh, gun rhetoric is a part of his commercial. October the 17th, 2012, we filed another lawsuit to force regulatory agencies to consider the health impacts of mountaintop removal in their permit process. Well, the OVEC uh, was lead plaintiff in filing a lawsuit against the Army Corps of Engineers for their permits and for not considering the health in their permits. <coughs> Excuse me. We are holding our ground and we need your help. We have recently introduced a bill to end mountaintop removal, specifically because of the health impact <coughs> and the impact of and the health impact of our unborn. The Ake Act, it's HR 5959, calls for an immediate moratorium on all new mountaintop removal mining permits and no expansion for existing mountaintop removal permits. Fourteen congressional representatives introduced, this, introduced the AIC Act. Please help support and follow this bill at the AICAct.org. Contact your state congressional representatives and find out if they've signed on to support the AIC Act, and if not, ask them to do so. And please join us in our struggle to save all that is Appalachia. See OVEC.org. Thank you.